I was a GP for 15 years and more recently I've been a sports medicine and musculoskeletal consultant for the last 15 years. So they're generally asking me about non-operative management of musculoskeletal conditions. Occasionally there are medical conditions such as a tired athlete uh, or somebody with asthma that um, want a bit better control over. Uh, occasionally there'll be questions about can they use this substance in this athlete and still comply with the anti-doping rules. That'll be the main sort of questions. Well, I think, uh, to me, general practice has got better organised over time, uh, and I think that's a good that's a good um, trend. There's been a bad trend in my way of thinking that some are, uh, in, in some areas, and that the corporate practices often the patients I find don't identify with a doctor, and to me they're not getting the best out of the primary health care service when that's the case. Having been a, a primary care doctor and um, seeing how well it can work, when you have people coming in to you as a specialist and you say who is their doctor, and they say oh, I don't really have one, I go to such and such, to me that's second class primary care compared with I have a doctor and he or she is so and so and I've known them for 10 years. Most of them complain about the uh, increasing bureaucracy and the amount of paperwork and I'm not immune to that, we've still got paperwork we have to fill in but I'm delighted not to have to fill in medical certificates for patients anymore um, and I'm delighted to usually deal with just one problem on any particular day uh, and by the time they've got three or four joints being sore I'm thinking rheumatology um, and I pity the GP who's got sort of a patient with three problems, they deal with that and then after 20 minutes they say oh and by the way I'm feeling a bit depressed doctor um, and fortunately I'm not in that space anymore. Well, I think some GPs who don't know sports medicine um, are, uh, that well think that we spend a lot of our time treating elite athletes. Uh, and I'm in the fortunate position of doing the medical care for the New Zealand rowing team. And I go out Wednesday morning and see anything between um, half a dozen and 20 athletes out there. And I'm as involved with our premier Olympic sport uh, as anybody, uh, and yet that's the, the remaining 80 to 90 percent of my working week is spent dealing with regular Joe Public uh, straining their Achilles tendon or falling off a ladder or work injuries. So. And the, the Waikato GPs are aware of my general interests because um, I've worked as a GP amongst them for 15 years. Yeah. Well, the, the number one thing that I always say to the doctors who come work with me is try and send your patients along with all their ducks in a row. So in other words, the ACC number, the date of injury, the body part that's affected, and preferably some description of the original accident. Because of the time the patient gets to see me, it's often three to six to nine months down the track, and the patient's long since forgotten. They still expect that uh, ACC or Aon or somebody's going to pay the bill, um, but they have forgotten completely completely what happened and if it's not on the GP referral letter then I don't know. Um, so that would be the number one thing. I think also just being, uh, if, if you ask a clear question of any consultant then hopefully you'll get a clear answer um, and so people say why is the referral letter important. The re a good referral letter is worth its weight in gold to me uh, rather than just please see and treat and, and, then, and then five or fifteen pages of the past five years consultations which I, I really haven't got time for that. I want a focused uh, letter with a paragraph knowing what the relevant issue is now and what their expectations are. And I guess the final thing is don't ever say to a patient, oh, I think he should do an MRI for you. Because as soon as the patient hears the word MRI, it's like the patient hearing the word cancer. They hear nothing else. They walk into my room. My hands are tied. The only thing I can do um, to satisfy that patient is to order an MRI scan, whether it's needed or not needed. And of course, an MRI scan in New Zealand costs $1,000. Um, and the patient never wants to pay, the or hardly ever wants to pay the $1,000. Well, I think there's continuing innovations in the care of tendons. Uh, 
uh, the, the majority of people with a tendon problem such as an Achilles or patella tendon get better with a progressive strengthening regime and that those things are being applied to hip uh, abductor tendons and also to rotator cuff tendons. Um, there's a lot of media play about things like PRP and other substances and the reality is that that is only necessary for a small group of people who don't get better with the standard uh, regimen of progressive exercise. The thing about progressive exercise is that it's not attractive to people uh, because they actually have to put the grunt work in. Uh, but if they're prepared to do that, such as say a phys ed teacher would do or a commando soldier or one of my rowers, then, then they get the benefit out of it, you know, and they don't, don't need to come into doctor's offices and have injections. Well, I think just to hopefully uh, enhance their clinical skills and as much as anything their clinical confidence in their diagnosis. Uh, sometimes it's tricky, but the old-fashioned sort of um, things of checking if pain's uh, present just with resisted movement, then that tends to mean a muscle tendon unit's involved rather than, say, a ligament. Uh, and obviously being aware of the, the, the major things that can go wrong so somebody with a knee that swells within an hour or so that's most likely to be an anterior cruciate ligament rupture or, or fracture or something serious and don't just label those people with a knee sprain uh, because there's generally something more important going on and unless that's picked up uh, then their, their management is not going to be optimal.